Ryan gets ready for some assisted lying in Florida. You wouldn't do that to your mom, would you, Tim? We'll show you the stakes for ending Medicare in the Sunshine State. Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. It's been seven days since Vince Romney had a slip of the tongue when introducing his running mate. Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. Well, that was a mistake, but over the past week, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan have repeated lie after lie after lie. So I, I thought it would be good if we should just pick up the Big 80 Board of Truth tonight and keep track of the lies from the GOP ticket just this week. There's only one president that I know of in history that robbed Medicare $716 billion to pay for a new risky program of his own that we call Obamacare. Oh, the Medicare lie, that is a big one. And it helped create more lies to benefit Paul Ryan. This man said, I'm going to find Democrats to work with. Found a Democrat to co-lead a piece of legislation to make sure we can save Medicare. Simply not true, says the very Democrat Mitt Romney is talking about. Senator, Mitt Ro Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said, Governor Romney is talking nonsense. I did not co-lead a piece of legislation. Now, let's see. That's two lies so far. What else is there? Bob played me a tape of, of, of one of the ads that President Obama has out there, and I, I just scratched my head. He talks about how wonderful it is and how we're adding jobs in the coal industry and producing more coal. And I thought, you know, how in the world can you go out there and just tell people things that aren't true? But the president is telling the truth. Since 2008, there are more coal jobs and there is more coal production in the United States. Well, the lies just keep on coming. Remember this one? Going out and saying he's going to take the welfare, excuse me, the work requirement on a welfare. How in the world could he not understand the power of work? The work requirement for welfare? isn't going anywhere. This is an outright lie. Romney's television ads are lying also. So now the money you paid for your guaranteed health care is going to a massive new government program that's not for you. It is for seniors. Obamacare helps seniors pay for medicine and preventive care. Today's seniors, if you will, my plan presents no change. The plan stays the same. Romney's plan causes Medicare premiums to rise in order to pay for tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. So that's another lie. So let's see now. If you're scoring at home, we're now up to six so far. The generation after today's seniors, generations after the, today's seniors. And under the president's plan, this goes bankrupt. Under the plan that I proposed, it is solvent. Oh, now this one is a double lie. The Medicare trustees say that President Obama's plan extends Medicare's solvency like eight years. Meanwhile, the Romney-Ryan plan would end Medicare as we know it. Okay, if you're scoring, we're up to eight. And it's not just Mitt Romney who is lying. Do you think the Obama bailout of the auto industry was a good idea sitting here today? It didn't help Janesville. They shut our plant down. It didn't help Kenosha, I represent there, shut down the Chrysler plant. Really? Even though Paul Ryan voted for the automobile loan? What I voted for was to prevent a worse bailout. This dishonesty definitely counts as a lie. And so does this. I live in Janesville, Wisconsin. We used to have a big General Motors plant. A lot of my high school buddies worked at that GM plant. That GM plant was shut down in 2009. I remember President Obama visiting it uh, when he was first running, saying he'll keep that plan open. One more broken promise. Now, here's the problem with this lie. The factory Ryan is talking about was closed under George W. Bush. Good afternoon, I'm Eric Franke with the C3K to go update for Tuesday, June 3rd. Rising gas prices and a sluggish economy forcing the hand at General Motors. Topping our news today, the decision to close Janesville's GM plant. So, we're in double digits now. Ten lies in a week. What do you think? Can we make it 11? You had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, I, Is that I, report I accurate? I never asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall that. I haven't seen this report, so I really can't comment on it. Getting tired yet? I never asked for stimulus money? 
This isn't just a lie. This is the height of hypocrisy. Listen to Paul Ryan talking about his stimulus vote in 2010. I assume you voted against the stimulus, and I'm just curious if you accepted any monies in your district. No, I'm not one who votes for something and then writes to the government to ask them to send us money. I did not request any stimulus money. Ryan has successfully lobbied for federal stimulus funds since 2009. As recently as five months ago, Ryan was still securing federal funds for his district. Now, letters show Ryan's signature on requests for money to invest in green technology and alternative fuels. Now, we would applaud the congressman from Wisconsin for the use of good government programs if he wasn't always lying about how bad they are. Ryan should probably expect more reactions like the one he got today. Who have epitomized what the American idea is all about. Why did you lie about accepting who have, who have epitomized... So what do we have here? Can you blame the guy for standing up? Because we've got now 11 lies in one week. One week, 11 lies. Now let me, let me pull a mitt here and make this real easy for everybody to understand. That would be 11 lies and zero lies from the Obama campaign. Romney and Ryan set a high bar for themselves when it comes to deceiving the American public, don't you think? You think they'll get into double figures again next week?